So this year I picked up like three hobbies to try out. Probably one of the better choices I made. So I wanted to tell you guys what I think makes these special and why you should definitely try at least one. This is my painting, it's kind of incomplete. And this is a painting I just borrowed from my sister <laughs> for the intro to this video. Film photography is one of those hobbies that's making a comeback. It was like two years ago when I got my first film camera for a trip to Nigeria. Uh, side note, this was my first time going back in 10 years. So naturally I wanted to make it special and film felt like the perfect way to do that. Now I won't give you guys all the details. If you've been here for a while, you know that this is a series of videos dedicated to my trip to Nigeria. I had the chance to capture some amazing pictures and videos, but I had one big problem. This is the Fujika STX-1N from 1982. Just for context, think about what else was happening around that time. You had NASA exploring space. That's one small step for man. Then there was the atomic bomb. And then you had this. Now, obviously film cameras weren't invented in the 20th century, but it's interesting to see that every part of this device is completely mechanical. So whenever you want to take a picture, the mirror moves out the way, the window slides open, and then your film is exposed to light. Just like that. Obviously, I can talk about these for a while, but I still had that problem. The problem is I got it off a seller on eBay who labeled it as untested. So for the whole time I was taking pictures in Nigeria, there was a very real chance that my camera was shooting blanks. And there was no way to find out unless I saw the whole process through because you, you can't take test shots on a film camera. You have to shoot the whole roll of film. So after we got back, I started the scariest part of the film photography process getting the shots developed. <laughs> The average cost of film is about $17, and one roll of film takes between 24 and 36 shots. So that means for every picture you take, it costs you 82 cents to shoot and develop. Now that doesn't sound like much until you add shipping, handling, and then if you have five rolls, 36 shots. $150 for this entire project I made. I think that's what makes film so special. Not the fact that it costs a lot of money, but just the exchange that happens. Every picture costs something. I don't really care about the hype, I just want to know, can you tell? Can you tell these pictures had a little more effort, took a little more time? Can you feel the energy and the stillness? Can you read the stories it tells on accident? How about the ones it tells on purpose? Does it feel familiar even if you've never been there? Does it feel foreign, exotic? The lights, the shadows, the buildings, the people. Is there something there that you just can't put your finger on? I can't put my finger on it either, but I think that's part of what makes it such a great hobby. It's, it's kind of like when you order an outfit on Amazon or you play the lottery. I don't play the lottery, but let's imagine you do. The dress doesn't always fit, you don't always win, but when you do, the risk, the time, and the effort, they pay off big time. Hey, can you explain this again? Okay, so right here is where I end the first hobby, and then I move on to the next one. What do you think? But what if you don't care about photography? Care about photography. Care about photography. The whole world's gone upside down. Popsy toy Who's ain't faster than rabbits? Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm making a dragon.
Okay, hear me out. I feel like hanging out with friends should also count as a hobby. Especially if you don't have hobbies of your own, you can always just borrow from what your friends are doing. For example, I don't paint, but when I'm around people who paint, then I dabble. So go out there, make some friends, and uh, steal some hobbies. Don't be afraid to make some mistakes along the way. Get behind the bowling lane that you, you know what's up, you know? So uh, we have a few people here, more people come in. Let's just have a good time, all right? I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Tie game. Got it was not tied. It was tied. We got to be humble out here. Nah, this is not well, NBA. This is not NBA game. because that's everybody, gets, everybody gets it. Equal around. Oh, no. oh. NBA is not. Nah. So I'm not a travel YouTuber, at least not yet. And I don't live in the more exciting parts of the country like New York or California. So naturally, my life is kind of boring. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just a boring guy. But. One of my biggest hobbies is finding out ways to make the boring things I do interesting enough to add to a video. Take my car for instance. It's not the most exciting thing to film, but recently I ran into this technique called the snorry cam, where you try to keep the subject in the center of the frame throughout the shot. And when I see stuff like that, it makes me, it makes me think, how can I add this to my video?
recently I've been thinking about the relationship between hobbies and heaven. And it's not out of the ordinary. In the Bible, Jesus used different parables to describe a lot of different things. And whenever he did this, it was because the idea he was trying to describe was so alien or incomprehensible that he had to relate it to something familiar. For example, nobody knows what hell is like, but we know what it's like to sit in a dark place, sad and angry and spiteful at the same time with no end in sight. And in the same way, there are certain qualities about hobbies that will mark our experience in heaven. This is the same gospel, the power of Christ unto salvation, Jesus as the only way, truth and life. But with a focus on heaven and why it's such an inviting idea. Heaven is going to be a fantastic place where we'll be in perfect relationship with God and with his people. And the remarkable thing is that a lot of the stuff we enjoy here, we're going to enjoy in heaven, just without the sin of pride when we do something great or jealousy when somebody does something better than us. So as you go out and pick up these new hobbies, try to see it as a gift from God a shadow of something greater intended to draw you to the source, to draw you to God, to abide with Him forever. Who knew hobbies could be so deep? <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Oh. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Good. Welcome to the fig tree. Oh. Pan over, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you Ring, let me capture the smart. I wanted to make it special, and uh, uh, I had to come all the way to Florida to record this intro. <laughs> I think I spat on the camera. <laughs> I know people throw around that world. <laughs> I picked three underrated hobbies to try out this year, and yeah, try it. Both for myself and for the vlog. Eee, oh. This is where, this is where I end the first hobby, and I move on. What do you think? <laughs>